Neil's going to do a short presentation too on some of the uh, work that he's done, and uh, I'll hand over to you then. And not to bear with me, I learned how to use plow planes and hand planes, and here I am with this stick. I'm not quite sure. So I, I don't know, does someone help me along here to get it up there? We are. Okay, sorry. So, so I want to look at, at, at a few things here, and, and there you are. Thank you. Um, at, at, at some sort of personal level, for the, the kind of things you run into. And what bothers me most is um, the, the, the destruction of homes on account of the can't be saved. And that great street house was a you know, interesting example. So, I've had the privilege of being able to save places. Like this one here was, um, came out of the Crown in 1838. You can't see it, but there is, like, up the street now. There they are. All right. Right in here, that door <coughs> uh, is, is, is in a stone section. There was the original building after the log cabin. It had a two foot footing underneath. And um, I thought my guys working, opening that up, the one corner was down at six inches. So obviously it was shipped. It was moving the wall. And when I got there, some of the local folks had been in. They were the, 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 the experts, I guess. Some had been in the building business and farmers. And, and you know, I said, it was interesting in the country. <laughs> Couldn't be safe, he said. And the customers in tears. Long story short, we did say. And it's just a matter of finding the big stones in the bottom. And instead of underpinnings, which I can show you in a few minutes, um, underpinning the large sections, we stabilized those stones. Then dug up behind them and put the down. And we went four for 20, tell you around. I saw some other, but timbers, oh my goodness sakes, timbers. That's another area, but you've got people say, oh gosh, it's got to go. It's rock, <laughs> building sagas. You know, and these are troubles that are going to be, and, and they're, you know, they're real, they're in their country. But it's not a survival. And, and you can do an awful lot of it. And there's one you can do, and I'll, I'll tell you now, you might forget later. It's like, what, oh, I haven't been here for a while, but I didn't see a dinner night. So I think we're going to be going in a short video. If you're, you can bring the sag on the floor. Don't ever try to do it in, in, in a hurry. No. You'll bust those things so fast and make your head spin. You've got to bring snug up. Give yourself a good base with, 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 with uh, a telescope posts. Snug them up underneath. Get it tight there and leave it for weeks. Come back and put it up maybe an eighth of an inch. Slowly, slowly, slowly. It may take 150 years to get a bone up more. You're not going to take it, right? You're not going to take it all out in the gym. If you are, it'll be gone. But it can be done. It sure is not to be done. It's fasting and, and for me, sorry, at times to, to restore this building. Um, so it just, I'm not sure why this one was up, but it was well, a fasting the pole. Like push, push the next one. Oh, indeed, yes, you know. It's so, okay. So, oh my goodness sakes. Well, there you are. Ah. <laughs> so, by the way, I want to put this together. I did see some of the things. Maybe there's some other homes. Like, yeah, I, it really, it's a privilege to work on these places. I've done uh, a restoration in, in on the, the Mark Museum cabin. Um, I restored that a few years back. And I've uh, also had the purpose of working on uh, the uh, buildings in the King Horn Museum at, at, uh, at for King City on my King Road there, St. James Street. Um, and and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a love of mine. So this is a boat. I'll actually be showing you pictures from, from I'm just going to think now. This one here, uh, we did no, uh, did, did, did no, um, uh, we did uh, sort of foundation work or whatever. It's a very sound house. However, we did the gingerbread house, the gingerbread on it. I have a lovely book, I have a collection of tools that I have books, and, and, and it's, it's uh, and, and we've got all kinds of, of uh, gingerbread examples. And I took to the customer and said, well, whatever you want, we'll make it. So then, <coughs> and uh, you think it was there all the time, the part was in, so the good grammar we're done. It's amazing stuff. <laughs> this house here is really, my goodness, a magnificent home, built in 1876 on sand, uh, on Richard Point, Lake Simcoe, just around uh, going northeast from, uh, from um, this home here, uh, you know, if anyone know what the Copper Creek Golf Club is, that is the farmhouse just north of it. We, we did the, the, the um, uh, we did a lot of stuff inside the house, and then this particular one, on the outside, we redid the porch. Now that porch probably dated, the house dated back to the 1870s, but the porch is about 1820s, or 1920s rather. So there are you know, different styles, but nonetheless, it's the kind of thing you have done and can do, but I'm not alone in the business, I don't think. Now here we've got foundations, obviously your foundations is where everybody starts. 
This is uh, showing you a house that's built in the 1860s storm, but you can see how we've got, they've put an addition on the back. Now we've got small, um, smaller stone here. All of that, I think there's another picture too of London that we'll show you as well. We have picked out what you think was mortar. Now those mortars were made out of lime. It's principally breathing. That's because of the strength. And the ashes in the earth eat, them, eat, eat the lime out. So if you've got stones really kind of holding them like together by itself. Sometimes, part of the saying, so sometimes I look at that and think, Jesus, I was young, eh? That wall could collapse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but I, I, I haven't said that. We watched as it went down. We had done some, uh, some work on that up in here, in this area here. Uh, and and, and uh, I felt it was stable enough, and so it was. The soil was stable as well. So there we are getting ready now. Obviously, you can see we're going down to the left. <coughs> and this area here is a bench. And a lot of people believe that it's cheaper to build then, pour a wall in front of that, and do what we call a bench footing. That will leave all that dirt there. It'll crunch on, on, on your floor space. Uh, and and, and, and uh, it's just one way of getting by without having to do a lot of work. Our these folks wanted to maximize what they had there. So we began the process of underpinning. And you can see we started now to do the concrete work here. That concrete is a mixture of, of, of uh, uh, not concrete, but um, mortar and seal bond, which is a bonding agent. Our mortars today are very, very strong. I won't give numbers because I forget them. It's important to know what this. Tremendous compression strength on, the, on, on new mortars. So there's no give. The old line mortar moves. And that's a principal uh, element to keep in mind when doing any kind of pointing of that kind of thing. These old houses, they're old bricks. They're soft brick. They don't have any pressure strength new ones. They need to be able to move. And you might not think the house can shift. And I'm not saying shift at great degrees, but there's movement with the seasons. There's movement with, with wind. So you, all these things you've got to take in consideration. But the low grade, I'm not going to put line mortar back there. Two reasons, number one, I want that strength. But secondly, if I was, if I was doing a, a, a waterproofing job or, 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 or whatever, and that's why I exposed that, and I was going to cover up again, the ashes from the earth are not going to eat that, that, uh, uh, the, the, the new mortars. So it's just something to keep in mind, someone's doing tuck pointing in place, is there lime in the mix? And there are different mixes, that, and, and, uh, but uh, anyway, that's, that's the, the principal point. So you, now I've got these bays, and, and, and uh, you get the, that one there, this one here, doing a four foot section, four foot, four foot, four foot, four foot, no bigger. And then you need to pour them. Of course, you take them all down. This is something, <laughs> interesting enough, look at this, effect. and this is my gosh, they moved the dirt back. This is another house we did, um, again, a stone building, 1840 is this one. And uh, um, we've, you can see how we've got the plywood set up there at the four foot section. And we've poured some in, 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 in on top of them there at that point for pretty much all the time. Um, and we'll let those set, and you go back later, and you take up the dirt between. Next, now you got four foot pillar. This, 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 this whole year, the, the, the foundation up. You take the center out, then on the earth, pour it back in. So that's uh, that's underpinning. Now this is that house that I showed you, the big white one on on the lake. It's on sand, and it's just intriguing to me because that entire house, with the two big turrets on it, is sitting on blocks of wood. From 1870 to 1876, most of them on sand. Look at that home. Oh, something like this. And I've he's got that money, bless us, sorry. <laughs> he's, he's a character this customer right now. And, and, and I've not to say, look, we've got to go in there and underpin this whole blessed thing because he's going to be doing this all the rest of his life. It doesn't happen. And uh, he's, he's happily there. We'll see. I want to get back to this place sometime. So, um, what we've got here is, uh, where are we talking about? There's rock there, rock, rock, rock in there. You see rock here? Is that, is that clear enough? I don't know. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Take my word on it. So there are some of these blocks. Those timbers are timbers on the turrets. And they're rotting. So we had to replace them. And that's the replacement. We bucked up uh, using jacks and, and timbers. We lifted the house enough we pulled those up. And believe you me, it's quite a weight. So, uh, we didn't, you don't bring it up any more than you need to. Especially if you've got a, a, a plaster home homes. If you do it gently and ease them up, you're not going to find a lot of breakage. But you go out hammering tongs and, 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 and you know, you're going to create free. Slow. So it'll take a long time to get there. Got to keep on for it. So, replace beams. And uh, those are hard for us all that we've done in the <coughs> Coming over to your, uh, your brick walls, we've got uh, just a you know, a poor situation here. What I pointed out, so get the water fixed up. 
before the water gets in the stone and moves away back. But um, if you look at this place here, small stones, small small birds, small birds, small birds, small birds and these are all along. And I, I had uh, a fellow come one time and told me, he, well, he said, you know what everybody wants this, wants a brick off of the old house? 1828 or so. Just broke my heart, but I couldn't say it and Mrs. Hogg couldn't step in. So anyway, I said, no, I don't. He said, well, uh, you know, don't tell me something to strip it off. I said, take a look at it. Those ends that are sticking out are actually tie backs. You know, we've got seven courses. The seventh course ties back, so you've got two bricks. How's he has to over? I said, you start taking that off and you'll go less the thing. Uh, so anyway, there's a side story. Um, but uh, this, you know, this, this is just an, an, an indication of how things are and, and what to look for. How is the house? Well, it's got a single course of bricks on it. It sure isn't early 1800s or mid-1800s. Double the length, triple brick. And, and it, it really, I think, is more of a reason from, but you're 1850s, your 60s, you're still in triple brick, and you're moving into a double brick with studs in front of it. 1857 is the first time in North America, and perhaps in the world, I don't know, North America, that anybody built a stud house as no stud houses today. Up until then, it was timber. Timber, timber, timber. And then you'd fill in with studs. We do plates and plates as we have today in studs. 1850s is when the first circular saw came in. You used to have the band saws, or they're not band, but, but they were uh, just a straight saw, but now they have like a cross cut. Hand saw, only it was vertical. And you have series of these that's pushing through. So it, it revolutionized uh, uh, the, the whole business of, of lumber, which was, a, you know, the big thing. Up until that time, a lot of hand doom work going on. So it's just fascinating, but when you get away from that, in the 1860s and 70s, you're getting into, into uh, more framing, less framing. But that will tell you what or not, it's a double brick. Is there, is there a stud wall in, inside that wall? That you'll have to ask, that's her picture, not mine, I can't tell you. No, no there wasn't. Wall? No, there was, it was a carriage house, and there was no interior <coughs> stud wall in that, in that building. So it's uh, a double course brick wall, and it's yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right, I remember it was supporting a, a, a second story lodge and the roof. Yeah. I have a confession to make. For 30 years ago, I knew I'd be making surgeries like this. I might have taken pictures. I'm a tradesman. <laughs> I'm going to do the job like to see if it is. So if you don't take time for necessary <coughs> I didn't have these fancy phones that go around and take pictures of Jimmy. So there you are. <laughs> but um, uh, there again, you're looking at, at walls that if you're going to do any type pointing on, should be working with lime. You see how white that is? And the lime water gives you that white look. So, coming upstairs, you've got color ties, and, 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 and I guess the thing is, there's a lot of things I can tell you about rules, but, but uh, a lot of times folks see a color tie, and that's this piece up here, those, uh, so those, they're, they're holding the rafters together, right, you come across and hold the rafters together, and I got called up by a fellow one time, uh, actually, to reference to it, through an engineer, and some bright spot had moved them up for him, when he bought the house. And it's doing this. It's moving up. So we did pull it back in. He asked me how much it would cost. I didn't know at the time. You know, you don't know these things. Not everything's, but I can remember telling him it's between fifteen hundred and five thousand dollars. Oh my, he says that's quite a spread. Well, I say that quite a spread of roof. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> and, I think it costs sixteen hundred bucks a day. But, but um, yeah, so so it's uh, there's a lot can be done to save buildings. Um, uh, I've worked on barns and, and, and actually I've got a project I'm moving on to very shortly. Uh, it's not another barn, and, and that's a, it's a whole history. But at the same time, it's, it's taught me a lot in terms of timber framing, which you run into, um, and stone work. And, and, and uh, like Bruce, I, uh, again, I, I, I have uh, bits and pieces of trims. Because you're right, they do tell the history of the, of, of the building. And some trims come in favor, out of favor, and in favor again, which is fascinating because you know for a fact that I was maybe say built in 1870, but it's like, hmm, it's like the ones you would have thought of this in 1830. And it's because there's been a revival. That's fascinating. And I'll tell you something else that's fascinating. Going into places, uh, and I know one place in particular, beautiful home. In my heart, I said, you know what, this place is 1850s, 1450s. Yeah, but you know, it's got windows that have four panes. Right now, I'm going to tell you, that's not, that's not an 1840s house. It's going to have multiple panes. If you don't see it coming about the 1870s, 1860s, early 1870s, you're going to see people coming into larger paint because of Ontario began manufacturing glass. And up to that point in time, most of it came over from Britain, as I understand in barrels of molasses, came from Pepper Brady, because it needed ballast. So they came across the slate forest, and they came across with glass. And who knows what else? 
But we got all the stuff in Britain. The Yanks, they pulled away a long time ago and they had to make their own. So, <laughs> but, that's, so but then Ontario began in the 1860s to have their own, their own plans for making glass. And so you begin to see this, this transition to four pane windows as opposed to, say, 12 pane. Or, you know, six over six or eight or 12 or 12 or 12. So um, it's, what's fascinating and bugged me. And I asked to see the inside of the house, they showed me around. And look at the trims, and they were 1870s. And then they began to see on the floor, where I, I could see a change of color in the flooring. I began looking at this other, I asked, and that place said, oh, was 1840s. Or, yes, yeah, so when they were late 1840s. They renovated the glass thing in the 1870s. Well, this new glass to come out, a lot more bigger windows. Well, the trims are coming out. <coughs> and we do it today, right? Yeah, so it's just a fascinating. The whole tale can be told in many of these places and, and, and the great history we have. So um, I think that's kind of it. That's kind of it. The other things I got there. Uh, I just love my work. And it's, it's gratifying. And there's so much can be done to save places that you needn't think, oh my gosh, you know, we got demolished. A lot can be done to replace. And, and, and there's a lot can bring things back to, to, to the original. There's a lot of times you can put your building. And, um, it's my pleasure to be able to take some of these places and I keep as many historic components as I can in my barn, which my dear wife said she could <laughs> put a master because no one knows what the ending is in there, but it's a block with a lot of old timbers as well. I like the height trims and, and that's fun too. And you know, it's just yeah, so so it's a great business. But if you're working in something new here in this heritage district, you're gonna have an awful lot of different ideas coming at you. Now they're gonna say preserve, preserve, preserve. Let me tell you, don't let guys come in there. Music guys. Okay.